Welcome to Lesson 7a, Hazardous Area. I'm going to show you how to plot the hazardous area downwind of a plume. Like, where will this plume be dangerous to people that live downstream downwind of the plume? So quick review, we can easily do a hazardous line downwind of a plume. Here's our Gaussian plume model with buoyancy for the ground absorption case and for the ground reflecting case. Let's talk about the ground absorption case first in this lesson. We know how to predict a hazardous line along the x-axis. If we define some PEL, say this can be a PEL or a NAX, if you're doing one of the criteria air pollutants, or if it's a HAP, you would use the PEL, for example. So let's just suppose that we have a PEL of 50 milligram per cubic meter for the particular chemical we're talking about. And I showed you how to draw this kind of a curve. This is both for the absorbing and the reflecting case. And so we can define anything above this PEL as the hazardous zone or hazardous area. If you're on the x-axis at y equals zero, they're on the center line of the plume, we can define a line. Let's do the absorbing ground case here. This line, which would be between about 1.5 kilometers and about 7.5 kilometers. So we would say that this is a hazardous line at y equals zero. In other words, in the center line of the plume. That's easy to do. You already know how to do that. What we're saying is that anybody in this area between 1.5 and 7.5 kilometers, if that person were right on the center line, that would be the hazardous line. By the way, for the reflecting case, it's much bigger because the reflecting case at the ground level was twice as high in the CJ. So the reflecting case, if I use blue here, would go to about 14 kilometers and a little bit lower, about approximately 1.2 or so kilometers to 14 kilometers in this particular example. So you should be able to do that. We already have done problems like that, example problems like that. Now let's extend this to a hazardous area. And so you're gonna have to think in 3D here. And I drew lots of pictures here to help us understand this. So here's a top view looking down from the sky. And here's our stack looking from the sky down. And here's the side view that we normally draw. And by the way, I always just use triangles here, but these plumes are more shaped. They tend to grow not as fast as they go downstream, but I'm just drawing triangles for simplicity in my artwork. And then we can plot CJ versus X. And remember, we talked about a location where the plume hits the ground, so we call that XG. And from this side view, we already know how to plot the CJ versus X curve. And we know that it looks something like this on the ground, and it would look similar to that a little bit above the ground if Z was uh, not equal to zero. So this is at Y equals zero, or the center line of the plume. And we know that anywhere above CJ equal PEL, then we call that hazardous. So let's just plot some arbitrary line here and call this the PEL. Just like we did up here, we plot PEL and then we know what that hazardous line is. On this plot, we know how to do that and here's our, our sketch. And so any CJ that's above that would be hazardous. So you'd have this zone of X, this line where it's a hazardous line. Now in 3D, where this ground hits, this plume hits the ground, that would be XG. So I, I plotted another plume area where this is after the plume hits the ground. So I made it a little darker. And we can plot some contours of some plots of CJ uh, as a function of Y. This top plot is Y versus X. And we can plot CJ on that too, like we have been doing. So let me sketch a few of those. So looking from the top, and I'm plotting these CJ profiles, let's pick all the locations where the CJ is exactly equal to the PEL. So that PEL corresponds to this height on this plot of the CJ versus X. And then this is where the hazardous line starts. So I drew a dotted line all the way up. So the first point would be right there. Let's put an X and I'll use a different color here. So let's put some blue X's where this CJ is equal to the PEL. So let's just by eye around there. And this will be symmetric top and bottom from looking from the top. So we have some points there and then we have some points there that are a little bit further out. And then we have some points here 
and I'm putting these points along the x-axis. This is where it's about a maximum, so it looks like about there. Then it starts to get a little bit smaller in distance y, something like that. I'm trying to keep all these blue segments the same size. And what I'm doing is plotting where cj is equal to pel. And then if you keep doing this, you're going to get some more points, and eventually it's going to end. So now let me connect all these points into what we'll call our hazardous area. And so we get some kind of a shape, and this is just by hand, so we expect it to look a little bit nicer than that, although I did a pretty good job with just by hand here, I think. So this area that I'm shading in here will be what we call the hazardous area looking from the top. So we're taking all the y locations in both plus and minus. So there's a positive y and here's a negative y. And we have to find where those points are at any given x and then just connect all those points and draw this hazardous area. Qualitatively, as we see up there, we expect this hazardous area from the top to look like an egg shape or sort of like an ellipse. So we expect the hazardous area to look something like that. So if you live in some location, so let's just pick point here and suppose this is where you have a children's playground or something and you're concerned about the air, this point would be in the hazardous zone. Now we're assuming that the wind is constant, but we're looking at a worst case scenario where there's a constant wind for a long time in the same direction on average, then you would calculate this zone and you would call this the hazardous area. And this means that your CJ everywhere in this area is above the limit of health, which is, like I said, either a PEL or perhaps a NAX if you're looking at a criteria air pollutant. This is kind of cool. You can predict that. Sure, sorry to interrupt, but I saw something similar on television news the other day regarding that train wreck in Ohio. They burned off some of the chemicals, and they showed a plot of the evacuation shown. Is this similar to what you are teaching us here? Yes, Sean, very similar. The main difference is that the source is on the ground here. There's no smokestack. Here are some video clips of the smoke plume, and this is the hazardous area. The yellow shows risk of injury, and the red shows risk of death. Did they calculate it the same way you are teaching us here? Yes, they may be using different models, but the procedure and the method would be the same. Thanks, Professor. That makes this stuff more interesting and relevant. Thank you, Sean. This is all qualitative. I'm going to show you quantitatively how to do that in a minute. But a couple comments. The first one is we typically have X in kilometers and Y is usually plotted in meters. So this plot is not to scale. If we would plot X and Y with exactly the same size scale, say both in meters or both in kilometers, let's do both in kilometers. First, let me label this. This is typically, as I said, meters and this is typically kilometers. So let's re-sketch that both in kilometers. I drew some lines to help guide me down from the previous plot. So the X locations are the same, but the Y is much compressed if we plot in kilometers by a factor of a thousand. And so it looks more like that than it does like an egg. When we plot it with Y in meters, it'll look sort of like an egg shape like I drew there. All right, let's do some quantitative predictions of this. And again, let's consider the ground absorption case first. We're going to do ground reflecting next lesson. Here's what we need to do. At a given x, so some given x location, and z, and typically we'll, we'll use z equals zero, but you can do this with any z because it's just math and then leave that z in there. So when you do your math, leave the z in, even though we're going to typically set z equals zero. And here's the key. We set cj equal to the PEL. So we're going to, instead of solving this for CJ, we're going to set CJ equal PEL, and then we're going to solve for Y. And that'll give us the Y extent. So we pick some X and we calculate the Y value where that hazardous zone ends. And if you have a Y, you also have a negative Y. It's symmetric around the Y axis. So you only have to do this once. You don't have to do it twice. And so we'll solve for Y at this X location and then repeat for various x to generate your curve. So you would be able to generate this plot as we go along and then just mirror image it down here to make the rest of the plot since it's symmetric. So that's what we need to do. Now, how do you do that? This looks like an ugly equation. So I'll ask that, how do we plot this? Well, if you're using Excel, 
you can use the goal seek. And if you're not familiar with that, I have a little YouTube video to show you how to do that on my YouTube channel. Just type in my name and you'll find my YouTube channel. And then some other software packages, if you're smart enough in MATLAB and other software, you may be able to solve directly using your software. So you don't have to actually solve this equation. You just plug this equation in like this and let it solve for the unknown. So in here, everything is known except y. At a given x, you can calculate your sigmas. You know your m dot j, and you know your z and your h, and you know that cj is pel. So the only variable left is y. That's an unknown. So those are some ways. And then also analytically, and this is a little bit of math, but you can solve for y directly analytically. And I want you to do that. Here's some hint on how to do this. Remember this identity from math, e to the a plus b equal e to the a, e to the b. So you have in this equation e to the a plus b, and the term a, we want to isolate that to solve for y. So we isolate this term, then go through, put that in here, and you know everything else. So it's really not that much work. It's just about less than a page of algebra. But I want you to do this. I'm not going to give you the answer because you will need this for your quiz. And then you will also need it for the homework when I will have you plot a hazardous zone. So do it all in variables. And if you get it right, you'll be able to use this for lots of different opportunities. So you should get an equation that looks like this, y equal, and then plus or minus, it is plus or minus if it's symmetric. When you take the square root of all this, because there's a y squared, you'll end up taking the square root and you get a plus or minus value. It's the square root of negative two. So I'm just partially solving this for you. Negative two times natural log of a bunch of stuff with all these constants and with the z term in it. And that is what I want you to do on your own. And then to check it, you can plug in my numbers for this example I'm about to do. So make sure you work through that algebra before you even attempt to try the quiz. You have a square root of negative number? No. This natural log of this bunch of stuff in here should come out to be negative. If it's not, you probably have a unit problem or something like that. So if the problem is well posed, you should get this whole thing inside the brackets to be less than one, so the natural log is negative. If you try it too close to the plume, so this is an interesting case here. If we try an x here, for example, you won't get a solution. Excel will just give you NAN or give you some stars, those number symbols, and it'll hiccup and say, can't do it. And if you do it out here, it'll do the same thing. So you would get a not a number here or there. So you have to kind of play around and keep working your way up until you start getting some values that are correct. And then you can plot Y as a function of X that way. So that's how it works. It's critical that you be able to do that. Now I'm going to do a quick example, and then you can use your equation to make sure you get my answer. And if you do that, you're pretty confident that you can do the quiz and homework without any problem. I keep using the same example as before, so you already should have software set up to solve things, so it should be fairly easy to modify. So we had our stack height, we had our buoyancy of the plume, and so we can calculate our H. Just adding those two up is 100 meters. Here's our U. Here's our M dot JS. I'm using the same weather conditions, overcast morning, which we have done this several times already. Class D, so you can look up those A, B, C, D coefficients. The ground absorbs the chemical when it hits the ground, and I give you the PEL here, which is the numbers that I used above. And so the key is, again, to set CJ equal PEL, and then you solve for Y. In this particular problem, I'm going to give an X location. I gave the same one that I gave in the previous examples where we calculated CJ. Now I want to find the Y location where CJ is 50 milligram per meter cubed. Again, I'm not going to show you all the details, and I want you to try it on your own, and you should get that y equal plus or minus to three digits, 250 meters. And if you get that, you should be pretty confident to do the quiz problem. So make sure you plug in all my numbers and get 250 meters. You only need to solve one and just put a plus or minus on your answer. In the quiz, by the way, you just put the positive value, the absolute value. So don't worry about the negative sign. Okay, so what I also did was do this in Excel. This will 
you'll be doing for homework, not the quiz, but I used Excel. I repeated for various X locations, not just that one location that I gave you here. And there's my egg shape. Notice that I'm plotting Y in meters and X in kilometers. So this is not to scale. But we have a hazardous zone. Everything inside that egg is hazardous. And let me just give you one other item. I give this in the quiz, but I'm defining this as the half width. So at some x, at x equal three kilometers here, the half width is here. And I picked that because it's a nice round number. It looks like it's about from 200 to zero. So the half width is 200 meters at x equal three kilometers. This is what I want you to give me in the quiz, the half width. The full width would be this, and this would be at x equal five. The width here goes from 250 to minus 250. So this is about 500 meters. That's the width of the egg of the hazardous zone. But I want you to give me the half width. So basically all you have to do is solve for y. And so in this case, your answer would have been just 250 meters. This is a pretty wide 500 meters. It's a half a kilometer. So it's not as narrow as you might think. Anybody in this zone, anybody inside here is exposed to air that could be dangerous for them to breathe. So we call that the hazardous area. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.